Right, uh, let's have a quick look at uh, what we're going to do now. So I'm going to make up this little uh, motor foot pivot. We've got two of these to make up, and they're both the same. So they just basically consist of a rectangular block with the spigot machined on. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to do them both together and do them back to back. And we'll do them out a bit of round stock. So basically that's the round stock. So we've got a machine a bit of stock down to a diameter of 27.2. Then what I'm going to do is uh, I'll machine on the spigots on one end, machine the spigot on the other end, and I'll leave this one longer. And I'll put a center in that one. We can then go over to the dividing head and set that up. Um, I'll put that in a, in a collet chuck. I'll put that on a center. And then we can just mill the rectangular shape around in the dividing head. Then I can um, cut them in half and then set them up in the three jaw on the spigots and then just machine them back to length. And uh, and we'll just do the uh, the drilling and counterboring for the um, for the socket head cap screws. So fairly straightforward. I think it's going to be probably the easiest way to go. But we could do this out of a bit of stock and machine it all down and then set it up in the four jaw and then try and get it to the offsets right but um, it's a lot of mucking around I think this is probably going to be the easiest way to go is to machine down a bit of round stock and, uh, and do it in the dividing head alright well we'll get out there now and uh, we'll cut our stock up and uh, we'll get set up in the lathe and we'll, uh, we'll start knocking this down my favourite machine. Saves my arms and my legs and my shoulder and everything else. Right, so we get the stock cut and uh, get that up in the lathe. Righto, so um, I've centered the, uh, faced it off and centered it. Um, we'll knock this down to um, 27.2. I might get that a little bit further out of the chuck jaws, I think. So we're going to go about 120 mil. So just before the chuck jaws. So we've got this down to um, 27.2 in diameter, so it's going to get ready to do our uh, milling of our block. We'll take the spigot down this end and then we'll do an undercut down here and machine another spigot up this end. But I'll continue knocking that down. We're going to rough it out. I'll bring you back when we start to uh, do the machining up this end. Alright, so what I want to get here is a is what I call a heel. Um, it allows me to get a start to um, start machining blind. So I'm just going to use the parting off tool to uh, to come in. And me and parting tools haven't had a good history, so we'll see how we go. Painless. You know what? I reckon we might 
open that groove up a bit more since that went so well. I don't know what sort of steel this is. I got it from the scrappos. It's um, the end of it looked like it'd been used to, as a piling drive. It was uh, it's totally mushroomed over, but um, geez, that machine sweetly. We might get some more of that. Cool. The tool isn't quite fitting down the groove now, so I just need to change the geometry a little bit. And that's what's great about this tool. Oh, that's hot. That's it changed. So now, get in a bit further. Now that is real hot, so I'm going to let that cool off. We'll come back, finish this diameter off, then we'll finish off the, um, the diameter on the other end there and, and get them faced off, and uh, then we'll get them over to the mill. Now I'm going to do these a little bit differently. I said I was going to do them in the dividing head. What I am going to do is put them in uh, a Stevenson's um, square block, and we'll use that um, as our reference to get our, our, uh, our flats put on. It's going to be a lot easier. So I'm going to hold one end in the Stevenson's um, collet, uh, and the other end I'll, I'll hold in the vise. And uh, as we do each side, I can rotate it around, take a reference, and we'll come down to depth to get those flats cut in. But we'll let that cool off first, um, and then we'll come back and uh, get these spigots off the size. Right, right, we'll just machine that off the diameter now. to over nominal size. Yep. Well I'll do there I'll just use a bit of emery to um to bring that back to spec to suit the um suit the bore on the pivot and whatever that comes back to we'll make that one the same but we'll get this down close anyway so we'll reset the geometry on our tool and we'll come back to start machining uh I don't know why I'm thinking this. I've got to get in that 8mm, not 10mm. Alright, I'll uh, <laughs> brain fade. I'll get this closer to 10mm and uh, sorry, 8mm, <laughs> we'll come back. Right, uh, so I've got about 0 0.03 left to come off that. So I'm just going to take a very slight lick on this and then emery that back to suit. Um, I've already whipped this one down. That's about 0 0.01 under eight, uh, which is a nice sliding fit onto that um, pivot block we made up earlier for the foot of the uh, electric motor. So I'm going to buff that, uh, I'm just going to take another lick on that, I'll emery that down to suit. We'll come over and set this up in the mill and we'll come back and uh, let you know what we're up to over there. Alright, I'll see you in a tick guys. Alright, before we kick it off, um, 
that's the Stevenson's block, the um, square Stevenson's block. I've got this set up in with an AR32 8 mil cord. So we've lightly clamped this back into the jaw. Then we've uh, we've come down with our uh, our finger clamp onto the uh, Stevenson's block. I've got that packed up at a height. I've got that packed up so that I can just touch the top of that, which is what I've done, to zero out. So the first one we've got to do is come up four millimeters from the OD of the shaft to come across. Uh, we'll then rotate that around, and we've got to come up seven millimeters, and either side is four millimeters. So I'm just going to use this end mill uh, to start knocking off. We're just going to take this very, very easy because these are fairly spindly, and we don't want to break anything. Now I've got this cut happening so that the force is going back onto the vise. I'll continue those around and uh, I'll bring you back when we're, uh, we're getting to the last one. Actually, before we do go, I'll just show you how we sort of set this up. It might be worthwhile. So, that's the finger clamp. Take that around like so. Make sure we're clean. Tap it in. Just get it up against the jaw very lightly. Let it square itself up. So it should still be at uh, zero. I'm going to take seven millimeters off this side, then we'll do the sides at four. Right, I'll bring you back when we're uh, almost to the end. Right, so we're just finishing this off now. Handle out of there. The digi readout. I've got uh, half a mil to go. I'll just see how that's looking for. I'm aiming for 16 here. Yeah, well, 16.47. Yep. I'm not going. I'm not going to quibble about that too much. <laughs> I 
and that's it all machine back so what I need to do is um, cut this one off the length and cut that in half I'll just set that up in the uh, in the lathe in the um, ER32 collet D14 adapter and I'll just face that off and that's it we'll set it up then for doing the uh, drilling and counterboring for the uh, socket head cap screws right uh, we've got to do this bit by hand so I'm going to cut this off the length first and we'll just put it in the uh, uh, in the um, face sander then just give that a lick and I'll, I'll put a chamfer on it camera stand right I'm just going to cut this one in half Specific training center for first years, and um, we got a block that was six inches by four inches by one inch thick block of steel, and we had to file that to within a thou all over at 100 by 150 by 25. Oh, sorry, it's 24. So we had to go all over that very, very gently and get that filed. And the uh, the apprentice master, Mr. Scott, <laughs> he would. Put it on a on a surface table with a feeler gauge, and he would go around it. And if that one thou feeler gauge went under, you had to go back there, blow it again, and then start again. And then when we completed that, we had to cut a shape out of it with radiuses and flats. And once again, we had to do that with a hacksaw all the way through. Then we had to file it and use radius gauges to get the radiuses absolutely spot on. Then we had to do some internal cutting. So a square and the other one I think was a hexagon from memory and then we did a series of drilling and tapping so it was a block that was used to uh, to lift our fitting skills and gosh it seemed like it seemed like six months we worked on that block for but uh, it was probably only about two months that we did all those activities all by hand and it was only when I was a fourth year apprentice I actually saw where that block was used and it was used in the uh, in ingot mill for um, for casting ingots and it was uh, a rotating uh, or a bearing block for the uh, for the molds so I actually found out where the where the stupid things went, and I thought we had it hard. Um, I did I did a year as a, an apprentice instructor when uh, when the apprentice master went away on, on long service leave, and uh, I had to go and do a, a train the trainer course up in Melbourne. And uh, there was an old bloke there from the Newport workshops, the old railways, and uh, we're talking about the old apprentice days and how we had to had to work on this on this block. And uh, he said, well, he made his students actually hand chisel. The first half inch all the way over before they're allowed to start touching it with a file so um all six sides with a with a cold chisel <laughs> a few black and thumbs and wreck fingers out of that i can bet you so uh no we didn't have it quite as bad so um yeah whenever i go and start hack sawing or i start filing i'm not as good as what i used to be i always think about uh, about those days back in my first year all right guys well i'm just going to sit this up in the Sand, just, just give that a, a lick back and I'll set this up in the uh, collet and the, uh, the lathe then we'll just machine that back and then we'll set up to do the uh, counter boring and, uh, and drilling. Alright guys, we'll see you in a tick. Right, oh, so I'm just licking this back now. I've got that uh, in the uh, ER32 uh, 8mm collet with the D, uh, D14 adapter. I've just clicked that face up, given it a measure and I've got to take off 0.1 of a mil and that's back to spec. Here first.
done. And that she comes. So all we have to do now is set up to draw and counter ball for our, uh, our socket head cap screws. And we can get that uh, assembly together and uh, maybe even put the motor on it. And uh, we'll see how it all sort of sort of looks proportionally. All right, well, I'll finish off the second one and uh, we'll get set up in the mill to uh, start doing that uh, drill and counter ball. All right, see you in a tick. All right, we've drilled this through at uh, diameter of six. We're going to come through with our uh, uh, 10 mil uh, drill and our flat bottom drill and just open those up. All done. I'll uh, deburr that and uh, we'll fit it onto the housing and we'll see how it all looks. Right, my batteries are getting low. I've just uh, nipped up that side. I've put that on there and it's dead flush, which is what I was looking for. And I haven't put this side on yet, so let's see if it's going to work. Oh, it goes in all right. It. If I need to go down any further, which I well, I may have to if I'm going to try and get the, uh, the Tommy belt on. I'm just going to take a little radius off underneath, underneath there. But other than that, I'm really happy with that. I've got just enough little bit of inflate on it, so I've got about a millimetre of inflate. What I can do, if I find it's going to be any uh, an issue, I'll just pop some. Uh, Little um, shims in there, but I don't think it will. So that's uh, another bit done. I'll uh, drill the studs, or drill and tap for the studs to uh, to mount onto the um, onto the motor foot. Um, I'll probably do that first up in the next video, so we can just sort of get a bit of an idea of how everything's proportioning out on this. But um, yeah, that's. Uh, that's real neat. That's come up exactly the way I wanted it to. All right, guys. We'll finish it up for now, and uh, we'll come back next time. It's getting a bit late. Only 7 o'clock this evening. I'm going to have some tea. All right, guys. We'll catch you next time.